everyone. Happy Wednesday and welcome to this edition of Wildcard Wednesday. My name is David Fuchs. I am an account relationship coordinator here at Geotab and thanks for joining us today. Our topic today is best practices and additional tools for Geotab Drive. Keeping on the theme of HOS, as many of us gear up for the ELD mandate coming to effect in mid-December, our goal here is to recap and review how to correctly go through some procedures within Geotab Drive. We'll also cover some admins that some of you may find very useful. So today's agenda, we are going to cover some common driver best practices and some things to avoid, some common areas that we need to avoid that we've seen over the past few months. We will jump into our Geotab Drive simulator and go over some things such as how to switch between co-drivers, utilizing yard move and other exemptions, as well as how to generate a compliance report. Also within Geotab Drive, we'll go over some useful add-ins and other tools. After that, we will go into the admin side of things and talk about unidentified driver logs, as well as editing logs. Okay, so this is an image that many of you may have seen before, but it's worth covering again, especially for today's topic. Geotab's HOS solution is based upon Cloud ELD. What that means is that the Go device installed in the vehicle communicates with the Geotab Drive app through your My Geotab database. So in a nutshell, the Go device sends engine data and location data to My Geotab, and My Geotab combines any manual duty status changes made by a driver to create an accurate log. So essentially, it's a system of checks and balances between the driver or the Geotab Drive app and the Go device that's installed in the vehicle collecting data. The reason this is important is because it's the very basis for how our HOS platform works, as well as an explanation behind some of the processes I'm about to cover. And we do have a section within the Compliance and Implementation Guide that goes into Cloud ELD a bit further. So the first topic I'd like to cover today are manual duty status changes. So sometimes we will see drivers manually change between drive and on if they do not see the status change on their tablet right away. So as you may know, when a vehicle stops, the vehicle must be stopped for a full five minutes before the tablet switches to on. The log will be backdated, however. So if a driver stops at two o'clock, on the tablet, they will see it change to on at 2.05. However, that log will show 2 o'clock in the logs. So what can happen if someone does this? One is that you may get duplicate logs. So on the right here, we see we have three on-duty statuses in a row, when really there should just be that one automatic one. Another thing we can see is an automatic switchback. So if someone stops and they hit on, they may be switched back into drive automatically, and now you have a drive to an on, to a drive back to an on within a matter of seconds. So really the key thing to take back here is that you need to let Geotab Drive make that switch automatically. People do have the tendency to press that on status if they don't see it change right away. It's just important that we do let the app do its thing. Logging out of Geotab Drive. So when a driver goes off duty for the day, it's very important that they also log out of the Geotab Drive app as well. On the right hand side, we see that we have the icon here that you click in the top right. This needs to be clicked on and you need to click log out. So what can happen if this is not done? Uh, if a driver goes at the end of the day and they go off duty and then they simply shut the tablet off, if that vehicle is moved later in the day, which many times it is for loading and unloading, that driver will be put into drive no matter where they are. They'll likely then go into on status, and the next morning when they open their tablet, they've been on duty for seven, eight hours, and now they're in violation. So the point to take home here is we need drivers to fully log out of the Geotab Drive application at the end of the day. It's not enough that they go off duty. They must log out as well. When a driver does log out at the end of the day and their vehicle is moved, the next morning when they log in, they may be presented with unclaimed logs. These are logs that are associated with the vehicle that a driver has not uh, picked up yet. So in the morning when they sign in, there will be this image on the right-hand side that says there are unclaimed logs for this vehicle. Please select which ones are yours. Now, the driver does not need to accept all of these. They can assign some of them to themselves. They can skip all of them. However, it's fine that they skip them because we will deal with them from an admin perspective. So really, the point here is to have the driver carefully ensure that the logs are theirs or not. Claim the ones that are theirs, skip the ones that are not. If some of them are theirs, it's fine. Okay, so now what we'll do is we'll jump into our Geotab Drive simulator, and we're going to go over how to properly switch between co-drivers, as well as look at some exemptions and how to generate a compliance report. 
So here, I'm just logging into Geotab Drive. I've made a username for myself called Dave. This is going to be a driver's email or something like that. So I'm just going to log in. Here, I'm going to assign myself to the vehicle that I was previously driving. I'm not going to attach any trailers. Now here are the unassigned logs that we talked about earlier. So these were generated because my vehicle was driven without a driver assigned to it. I actually have a large number here because I haven't been great with my logs. However, I'm going to skip these right now because they're not mine. And I can do that right down here. Next, I'm going to begin my DVIR by hitting inspect. And we can see down here that I've been placed in on duty automatically. So what I'll do here is I'll certify my previous inspection and then I'll begin my current inspection and hit no defects. And I certify this here. Okay, so now we can see I've been placed in on duty automatically. Here's my HOS status. Now, if I'm about to begin my day and I want to have a co-driver, I will do that by adding them in the top right up here, hitting this little icon. This is the same area where you log out, but in this case, we're going to add driver. In this case, I've created another username for myself. I've called it Dave Co-Driver. However, this will be the username of the other driver in that vehicle. So I'll go ahead and log in here. Because I'm using the same tablet as my co-driver, I'm automatically assigned to the same vehicle. I'm not presented with an opportunity to do DVIR because it's already been done. However, I am placed in off-duty. So going to our status page, we can see that there's not even an option or the possibility of going into drive. And the reason that is, is because our main driver here is in the driver's seat. They have the icon here, the steering wheel icon. This is important. What's important to note are two things here, is the steering wheel indicates who is in the driver's seat. And that means any automatic duty status changes, like we talked about before, the drive, the on, those will always be associated with the main driver. The other thing to note is that the driver on top here is whose interface we're interacting with. So if you are to make any manual duty status changes, such as going off or into sleeper berth, the driver needs to be on top right here. So let's go through a little exercise here and switch drivers. Maybe the main driver is done and the co-driver is going to take over. What we'll first do here is I'm going to go into on duty. And then up here, I'll hit the icon and I'm going to switch the driver's seat to co-driver. And I do that by hitting this button, driver's seat. And I'm just going to click on co-driver here. In the case of a person using the application, they'll simply hit it with their finger. So now we can see I do have the possibility of going into drive. Again, this is going to be automatic. Clicking back on the icon, we can see that the steering wheel is next to our co-driver and our main driver is now down here. Now maybe the main driver wants to go into sleeper berth. To do that, we'll click on their icon so that we can open their interface. We can see that D is gone here again because I'm not the main driver or in the driver's seat. I'm going to go into sleeper berth. So now while I'm in sleeper berth, all automatic changes will be associated with co-driver. So those are the simple things to note when working with co-drivers. We'll go through the little exercise again here, and I'm actually going to log out from the co-driver. So the main driver is going to take over. I'll do that. I'm going to go into on first. Under here, I will switch the driver's seat by clicking driver's seat and switching it back to the main driver. Then I will go back and click on co-driver so that I can go off duty and log out. I'm going to hit off duty here. And then I'm going to go up here to the icon and log out. So now I have these logs that I just created. They're unverified at this point. I am going to verify them. They are mine. And now I'm logging out as the co-driver. Now we can see now that it's just the main driver here. So those are the steps for switching between co-drivers. If you have more questions on it, I have included a link in the presentation that goes over the steps and the presentation will be given out at the end of this. While we're within the Geotab Drive Simulator, I'm going to show a couple more things here. One is the exemptions. So if we navigate to the Options tab, this is where drivers can implement things such as yard move, 
personal use or personal conveyance, as well as adverse driving conditions. In order to implement these, I simply come here to the Options tab and I hit Start. But you do need to enter an annotation. So here I'm going to say Moving Vehicle for Loading and hit Apply. So we can see that I'm in Yard Move and we can see this through a few different things. One is that we have the stop over here. The other is that under Status, it says I'm currently under Yard Move and all of these options are grayed out. And the other is under logs. We can see that I have my yard move here with the annotation. A couple things to note on yard move. Yard move counts as on duty uh, hours of service. So if a driver is in off duty and they implement a yard move, they will no longer be on break and they will be on duty. So if you come to that 25 minutes, you're not yet at that 30 minute break and you implement the yard move, you will be put into on and the driver will need to take their break again. So that's an important thing to note. They cannot implement yard move and still stay off duty. Going back to options, I can turn off and stop the yard move by just hitting stop right here. The same processes apply for personal use or personal conveyance, as well as adverse driving conditions. Another thing to note with uh, yard move and personal use is that these need to be activated under the driver's user profile. And this can be done within the database. So I'm just going into our database here and going to our user list. Here's my username. I'm clicking on it. I'm going to HOS settings. And we can see here that I've allowed yard move and I've allowed personal conveyance. The reason these exist is that it depends on the carrier if they allow things like personal conveyance or yard move. So you do have the options here. Going back into the simulator. The other thing we can do within options is generate a compliance report. And we see this here down at the bottom. We also have other information about me and my uh, home terminal and my time zone and my rule set. Down here by hitting this generate button, I'm given my compliance report for the day. It's got my hours here and my logs. And I can also toggle between days. Going back to our HOS dashboard, I do want to show a few add-ins that some of you may find useful. So by hitting the menu here on the left and going to dashboard, we are presented with a few different options. One of them is the USA Canadian border crossing. So this is for drivers that may be crossing the border and need to change rule sets easily. In order to do this, we simply just hit the button and we can switch the Canadian rule set. When we go back, we can switch back. Also here we have the short haul. So if we need to apply a short haul exemption for the day, we can do that here as well. And we also have the fuel tracker button. So this allows drivers to track their fuel fill ups by hitting this, and they'll hit the plus symbol and they will be able to add their fill up. One thing to note on adding fill ups is you will need to add a custom security clearance for these drivers. And this can be found again under the users page. I've created a custom clearance for my drivers here by going to clearances and adding it under drive app user. The two um, features that you do need to enable are administer fuel transactions and view fill ups and fuel transactions. These are the two features you need to enable in order for drivers to use that add in. For a complete list of our add ins, head to the compliance and implementation guide. Again, I have linked to this in the presentation. We have the border crossing here for the 60 hour, seven day US rule set, as well as the 70 hour, eight day US rule set. Both of these can be used with the Canada Cycle 1 rule set. We also have a bulk import trailers tool. So this will allow you to import your trailers into the My Geotab system in bulk if you need to too many at a time. Here's the fuel tracker. You also have the ability to import HOS logs if you have HOS logs from another system, as well as import a DVIR tree. 
So this will be if you're creating a custom DVIR list. We also have something called the Geotab Kiosk tool, which allows drivers to log themselves as on duty and off duty. So this will be done if a driver comes in for the day and has begun some work. However, um, they don't have access to a tablet yet. They would use this, and it looks a little like this. Is it just got a you have a button here on duty and off duty. So drivers could do that at the beginning and the end of the day. Then we have our short haul switches here as well. So again, in the presentation here, this here is a link to the steps between uh, for switching between co-drivers, as well as um, a little image showing where you can apply yard move, the other exemptions, as well as generate a compliance report. This link here links directly to that portion of the compliance guide that I uh, just showed. So going to the admin side of things, we spoke a little bit about unidentified driver logs, and we talked about how it was fine that drivers skip these and we leave these unidentified. That's fine as a carrier. However, you do need to annotate the log explaining why it's being left unassigned. The way to do this is to search for the duty status logs for unidentified driver. You can click on those logs, and we can see over here to the right, this is what happens when you click on a log. We see that this log is unidentified. Please associate it with a driver or add an annotation. So what you would do here is you could simply add an annotation at the bottom saying this is a yard move done by your loaders, and then you'd hit save. It's good to note that this can be done in bulk, so if you need to do 50, 60 at a time from the night before, you can click the check mark and down arrow to the top right of the logs, select your logs, and edit them in bulk, and do the same thing. Editing HOS logs. So drivers are people, we all make mistakes. Sometimes a driver may claim a log that's not theirs, especially those unclaimed logs they're um, presented with when they log in, as well as a driver may forget to go off duty for the end of the day. This will happen. So logs can be edited, and you do this by clicking on them the same way we annotated the unidentified driver logs. So you can click on those logs and you can do one of two things. You can change the status, so we can take an on log and change it to an off log. Or you can change the driver. So we can say, okay, this is not Dave the driver's log, it's Steve's log. I can change the driver that that log is associated with. Two things to note here. One is that annotations must be made when logs are edited. There needs to be um, an explanation as to why this was edited. And then also there will be a little pencil next to that. So we have uh, indication that this log was edited. The other is that you are unable to remove or change the status of an automatic drive log, and this is part of the mandate. So if you have an automatic drive log, you cannot simply change it to an off log or change it to an on log. You can change the driver of that log. So you could say, um, this is not Dave's automatic drive log. It's actually a yard move. So I'm going to change it to unidentified driver and then annotate it. This also brings up a good point that it is not best practice and it is not compliant if you create a dummy username called, say, yardmove at geotab.com. That is not allowed within the system. That's not allowed within the mandate. What you do in those cases is assign those logs to unidentified driver and then annotate them accordingly. I've included some more resources here at the end of the presentation. We have a link to our compliance and implementation guide. This is an extremely important document to have. It has everything I've covered today is within this guide. You can simply open this guide and search for things and you will be able to find an answer. In the compliance and implementation guide is the Geotab Drive App Manual as well as a Cloud ELD Defined, which goes a bit more in depth about what I described at the beginning of the presentation. However, it is important that you have this bookmark because if you have a question, it's likely to be in here. So that is a wrap up for this week's short Wildcard Wednesday. Thank you so much for joining us today. I hope I was able to provide some key insight into the areas of Geotab Drive. Remember, for more fleet tips and best practices, visit geotab.com slash blog and register for our blogs. We are actively adding great content and reads, so please check it out. We'd love to have you on board. On behalf of myself and everyone here at Geotab, I thank you for joining us for today's Wildcard Wednesday and wish you a productive and profitable week. Thank you and take care.